Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Yeah, welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Like we say, five panelists, five topical issues, no holds bar. In other words, we tell it like it is. I'll be looking at the intendment of the law in the matter of INEC, Baeza, and the election tribunal. Rookie all the way from Canada, similarly be speaking to our own constituents in the urgent matters of Nigerian Emergency Service. And she seems to be saying, where is it when you need it? Wait to hear that. Chuka appeals to our shunning ostentatious and returning to the simpler pleasure in life. Chuka, we dare your back anyhow. Ikene raises the alarm and says, when trust is lost, the center cannot hold. Well, that's if her assessment of things is to be trusted anyway. And Sedu, I know I will trust this one, also profiles another relationship that has been rocked by issues of trust, the MBA and the recent Aerofy on invitation. And definitely, you know I have a lot to say on that. You can see from the lineup, we are not averse to rocking the boat in the interest of genuine stability. I'm up first, definitely after the break. According to Lord Denning, Master of the Roads, MR, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. INEC, Baesa, and election tribunals. Now, the governorship election in Baesa has been a subject of litigation controversy, even after the Supreme Court judgment disqualifying the APC candidate, wherein PDP candidate became the beneficiary. It's no longer news. That's old news. However, what became news was that the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, sitting in, Baez, in, in Abuja, ordered INEC to conduct another governorship election in Baeza on an alleged exclusion of the political party ANDP. INEC had argued that the advanced Nigerian Democratic Party, that's ANDP's nomination for the election, was invalid because, as at the time of the submission of the governorship candidate's name, that he was not of age, as he was 34 years old, having been born on the 10th of February, 1985. And by virtue of Section 177, Paragraph B of the Constitution of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, it makes it mandatory for a candidate for such office to attain the age of 35 years before he or she can be eligible to contest for election. The party, however, on the September 21st, 2019, while acknowledging the invalidity of his candidates or the nomination, attempted to substitute the underage candidate with one Miss Inoue Judith, who also was said to be underage by the election petition tribunal. But the party was informed by INEC by virtue, that by virtue of our election timetable, released on the 16th of May 2019, that the time for substitution of candidate has lapsed. But by letter dated 3rd of October 2019, the party threatened to go to court if its candidate was not reinstated. The candidate was neither reinstated by INEC, nor did the party go to court to challenge the decision. Even though the provisions of section 285, subsection 14, paragraph C, of the, constitution of, of the 1999 constitution as amended, that's the fourth alteration, defines the above scenario as a pre-election matters and admonish parties to approach the court within 40 days from the time of the, the cause of action arose. The party, however, approached the tribunal, that's by 100 and something days after the election and declaration of APC as winner, only to withdraw the petition in the alleged interest of Baeza thereafter. And they subsequently filed another petition, immediately the Supreme Court's judgment invalidating the candidature of the APC for which the PDP became beneficiary. Somebody then asks, 
Maybe the interest of Baeza was extinguished by the Supreme Court's judgment. I don't know. Maybe you know. However, my worry is that with this tribunal judgment, the implication, therefore, is that even if a certified lunatic, an underage minor, a foreigner, or a criminal convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction is nominated by a political party, INEC does not have the powers to declare the nomination invalid unless and until someone goes to court to challenge such nomination. What if nobody challenges it? Then, unfortunately, a lunatic, a minor, a convict, or even a foreigner can then become a governor or president in Nigeria. I dare say that cannot be the spirit of the law, nor the intent of the drafters. And yet, the judges are learned jurists, and we must all coerce as your lordship pleases. I would therefore advocate that the NJC should not allow such interpretation to be used to destroy our democracy, as the weddings of section 285, subsection 14, paragraph C of the Constitution, while defining the meaning of pre-election matter is clear enough for even a layman to understand. It says, a political party challenging the actions, decisions, or activities of INEC, disqualifying a candidate from participating in an election, or a complaint that the provision of the Electoral Act or any other applicable law has not been complied with by INEC in respect of the nomination of candidates of political party or for an election must approach the court within 14 days. So therefore, if INEC cannot render a nomination invalid, why then did the above provision request parties to go to court if INEC disqualifies their candidates? As the law, like I said, I believe that the law will never intend INEC as an administrative body not to have power to take administrative actions to enforce the Constitution or its own guideline. As doing that, we not only further overburden the court, but we rather INEC ineffective considering the knack by our politicians to observe the law in breach. Well, mind you, my advocacy is not to sit here on appeal over a decision of the tribunal, but according to Lord Denning, to look at the intendment of the law with you, even though you all have occurred, as the court pleases. Yeah, I mean, Libras, I'll step in here because um, what you call the intendment of law, I remember I did an advocacy once looking at the mischief, and that's, that's what it says to me. We all know what is right. I think you've pointed out several, do you say glaring loopholes here that just show you that there's a discord. People are just playing mischief, they're playing footloose. Because as you saw, the role of the ANRP was like a pawn, you know. So yeah. when things seem to be going their way, they will hold back. When things not going the way of the party they were used to sort of weighing on there to the advantage, they'll step in, which is why they fell short of the 14-day thing. It caught them out. So, but now it's no secret that these judges are, in a way, being used as pawns. The problem we now face is how do we hold them accountable to such an extent that if they are found to be playing this, because what you pointed out, I'm sure most people can make that connection. But now, how do we hold them accountable so that they'll be afraid to play games like this? Because, you know, these other elections are coming up at those state, and we're going to see even more of this play out. Yeah. How do we block those loopholes so that they'll be afraid to do something so open like this? Because it's like, and you have to explain, how is it that a Supreme Court ruling can be overturned by, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, so something is just the off, off point here, and it makes me very concerned. Because if the judges can be relied upon or can be held accountable, then what else are we saying now? I, I really don't know how are we going to get this thing right. I'm really stuck here. Uh, so I'm throwing it out there. I, I think um, there's some political parties that their strategy basically is wait for the election, you know? Yeah. And then yeah, that's they true. fight the real battle at the courts yeah, that, oh where God. they know that they're stops. probably yeah. and looking mm. for technicalities. So to I think I just there. And at the end of the day, the eventual losers are the electorate because. Uh, the people of Bayels had spoken, right? They had a candidate that they voted for. There was somebody that won, but on technical grounds, he lost that election. Okay. And somebody else took, took, it. Yeah. You know, took the, uh, the uh, gubernatorial mm. position. Now we're having that issue play out again now. Mm. So those guys have not gone to sleep. They are using every the same means, technical the same technical, uh, technicalities, yeah. you know, to get the, to get uh, the other man out again. The other man out, exactly. You, you, you see. Um, but for me, I'm thinking, what are the timelines? How can you stipulate 14 days and then 150 days later you can still bring that same matter? I think you need to hold your laws um, literally as you said they, they are. Like, like um, um, Sarebi said, you're using the um, loopholes 
to get into the game. Yeah. These are political parties, A N D P or, or whatever they call themselves, yeah. probably know they can win an election in Bios State. And so all they have to do is to align to whoever they think will win and get either positions in the cabinet or, or whatever you. And when they have lost out, then they now have to go and challenge the other party because they think that's their only game, um, you know, a skin in the game or whatever. And of course, maybe PDP people will now settle them. Now, as you said, um, the law, so these, um, these judges, how are they making these decisions? Are they really free, doing it free and fairly? Or are they, um, you know, as one um, guru would say, pohoing to the cotoin of the people who are seeing them behind? Are these people corrupt? Because you're wondering, the law is very, very clear to see. And you have made guidelines, you have made them stipulations of how people can go and object to any, any, um, any uh, shortfalls for their candidacy. So why are they coming out now? What is, what is really going on? So are the judiciary biased? And why are they biased? And even the um, political parties, are they really being honest? And who's really losing? Like um, I said, it's probably the, um, the people of bias at state. How can you do an election again? We all know the cost of an election. Okay. Chuka, do you want to say something quickly? No, no, no. I just think that this is just Nigeria playing out, sadly. And uh, Bielsa is just being made to look stupid. The people of Bielsa are just being made to look stupid. Why? Um, <laughs> you can't say uh, You know that. You know the word uh, our friend has uh, yeah. made very famous. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very sad. And uh, um, this if you would want to ask, maybe somebody's bankrolling this. Whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, calling out societal dysfunctionalities is not a responsibility we take lightly here. Rookie rises to the challenge after the break.